I've been putting off making this video for a while now, but I'm finally going to do it in honor of a president going floopy. No, he didn't die, he just resigned. Anyway, I decided to temporarily stop shitting on people in favor of shitting on institutions, specifically Stanford, to avoid getting flamed by the other colleges. I wanted to talk about college admissions in general, and by that I mean to capitalize on my college name because I just got monetized. <laughs> So why do I care about this? To briefly share my college application experience, I'm a Chinese international student at Stanford who will be a sophomore next fall. I applied in 2022 as a CS major, but now I just want to fuck around. When I was in high school, I was your typical anxiety-ridden high achiever that was obsessed with one particular school for no reason. I thought of college admissions as the sorting hat from Harry Potter who looks into your soul to see where you belong. And I firmly believed that my soul resided in the Taco Bell architecture of Stanford. Now, I was dumb as fuck for believing that, but these things are what colleges pay a lot of money to convince you to believe in, so I tried to take every box to get in. I got straight A's, I started every club under the sun, I committed a bunch of war crimes on GitHub, won some snazzy competitions for said war crimes, and I watched every video on YouTube about how to get into Stanford, I said the campus is my desktop background, and for four years I dug myself deeper and deeper into my fantastical Stanford dream. And looking back, that was fucking bleak. A bunch of teenagers being targeted for a fragile sense of self-worth and sold to this corporate lie to trade our humanity for some confetti on a decision letter. It feels really shitty to watch high school students after me being sold to the same lie. A lot of kids and their parents from my high school ask about how I got in, speculating about whether it's because I cured cancer or because my dad is secretly Bill Gates. It was none of that. I got in because I sold my soul, and also luck. Mostly luck. So I wanted to make this video to tell you the things that I wish somebody had told me when I was in high school, just for me to promptly ignore them and to clear up all the lies you've been told about college admissions from the perspective of someone who's on the other side now. <laughs> you've been told a shit ton of lies by college admissions officers. You're told that colleges care about your personality, your dreams, your villain origin story. None of that is true. The only thing the college wants to know is how much money they can make. If you succeed in academia, if you start a successful business, if you're good at sports, if your parents regularly donate to the college, all of these things let the college know that they can probably make money off of you in the future. Coincidentally, all of these things are more likely if you come from money. You'll often hear advice like, be yourself on college applications. No, only be yourself if you're profitable. But if you're not profitable, then market yourself as someone who is more profitable. And then if that doesn't work, then go like this. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> And there's nothing wrong with that. Colleges are businesses, so of course they evaluate you for your profitability, just like how they're academic institutions, so of course they focus on your academic potential. But the problem arises when we get indoctrinated to believe that college acceptances determine our inherent worth as human beings, and forget that in reality it just gives you a lame, barely accurate prediction of how much money you're going to make for the college in the future. Another lie that they tell you is that college admissions is not a formula. No, it absolutely is. Now, colleges do use holistic admissions, and the argument for that is that your personality, your humanity is taken into account, not just your test grades. But is it really better to take one glance at your personality and reduce it to a number? It sounds even more bleak to me to take the essays that students pour their souls into and go like, this is a two, which is exactly what they do, by the way. I read my admissions file, and they just assigned a number between one and six inclusive for every criteria, like intellectual vitality or personal essay. There were also short written comments, but I suspect that they only resorted to using words because they haven't figured out how to numerically quantify all aspects of humanity yet but they're trying damn hard to. Of course it's not inherently unethical to quantify seemingly qualified data, because everything is quantifiable, and it does make the process more efficient to treat it like a formula. But colleges use holistic admissions bullshit to virtue signal, when in reality it has nothing to do with morals. They just don't want to admit that you're just a dollar sign to them. It's bad business. And that being said, to answer the question of my clickbait title, how to get into Stanford. Here are the factors that you can control, if we assume that free will is real. Following this advice landed me in Stanford and also therapy. So, Number one, prepare to forego your personal development for two to 18 years in favor of impressing a brand. Number two, learn. Not knowledge, of course, but learn how to maximize results when putting in minimum effort. Instead of learning the things that you're interested in, which is a terrible idea, learn the things that make you look smart on your resume. Number three, sacrifice your REM sleep time to hoard a bunch of extracurriculars. Be sure to be both well-rounded so that they don't racially profile you, but also to build a spike because it's totally reasonable to expect 17-year-olds who's only been exposed to three academic fields to even know what they like. 
Number four, shamelessly exaggerate your achievements on your Common App. This skill will be useful in the future for when you write your resumes to apply to internship positions that you'll never hear back from. Now, admissions officers will definitely call your bullshit on this, but with everyone else exaggerating their achievements, your president of the math club will just look bad compared to someone else's. Exercise dynamic leadership to foster a thriving academic community through strategic planning and engaging activities that enhance. Number five, trauma dump on your essays to show vulnerability, but don't be so vulnerable that they just feel bad for you. To quote Tina Yong from her amazing TED talk, your story has to be sad enough to gain sympathy, but not so sad that it makes you seem beyond help. Just critical enough to inspire change, but not so much that it actually criticizes systemic structures. Just honest enough to seem real, but not so unfiltered that it creates discomfort. Number six, religiously browse the college results subreddit and obsessively memorize the resumes of everyone who posted on there. Clearly, this is a very cynical take on the matter. I've met people at Stanford who were actually motivated by passion rather than anxiety in high school, but this is how I got in, and this is how the large majority of us got in. But if you do all of the above, does that guarantee admission? No. The biggest factor, the biggest player in the game, is completely out of your control. Luck. And I don't just mean luck in the admissions process, even though yes, the admissions process is a coin flip. I mean the fact that this coin flip is skewed, and luck determines whether or not it's skewed towards you or against you. Luck as in drawing a good hand of cards at birth. The only thing that the student body here has in common is that most people here have a high cumulative amount of resources across all of these departments. Of nepotism, capitalism, elitism, or natural selection. If their resources are lacking in one department, it's made up by the resources in another. Although some of these resources are glorified over the others, once I got here, I realized that it's not any better to get lucky in the natural talent department than it is to get lucky in the immense generational wealth department. We're all just lucky. In fact, you could probably tell where this is going, but free will doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter whether you get in or not. Don't get me wrong, it's great to go to your dream school. Of course it's great to go to a well-endowed, prestigious academic institution. It's exciting when my college gets shouted out by TV shows, even if they spell it wrong, and even if the character that goes here is always a pretentious little prick. You get to wear your college merch at the airport, or capitalize on the college name the second your YouTube channel is monetized. But at the end of the day, the college you go to is nothing more than a geographical location and a six-figure debt in your bank account. Not me, though. I'm a twat and my parents pay for my tuition. What I'm trying to say is, college marketing tries to tell you that you belong somewhere. Now, you don't belong in an academic institution that was built upon eugenics. You're way too cool for that. You literally only belong in yourself. The only constant in the universe is your perceived locality in space-time. Everything else can change, but the only thing that remains the same is the fact that you're stuck inside of yourself. What was my point again? Uh, so if you're upset that you didn't get into the college you wanted, just ask yourself if you see yourself as just a dollar sign. For me, when I was in high school, and probably now, but slightly less so, the answer is fuck yes. But that's no way to live your life. Of course this video won't change anything because we're all pawns in this game. But I hope it at least makes you feel better if college admissions was a shit show for you. To all the students in the current admissions cycle, I'm so proud of you. College will be great, no one's gonna shoot you in the head for not submitting assignments on time anymore, and it's gonna be a while before you have to figure out how to pay taxes, so enjoy it. Shout out to Introverted Madness, he's my absolute favorite Stanford YouTuber, and if you're an incoming Stanford frosh, congrats, and don't forget that we have a mandatory curfew at 10pm.